Welcome to Mom Unaire Digital Marketing Podcast, where we gather to learn how to use online strategies to build our direct marketing business. Through this podcast, you will be learning how to create offers, funnels, and storytelling so that you can create value for your potential customers as well as your downline. Enjoy the show. I am so excited. I'm here live. This is my first time. So I hope some of you come and join me today as I talk about my experience with creating my podcasting and giving you some great tips to help you to create your own podcast. I know many of us, when we're thinking of creating our own podcast, we're really nervous. And sometimes just being nervous has caused us not to create our own podcast and we procrastinate. So I want to talk more about my podcasting experience. In fact, I created some bullets so that I know exactly what we will be talking about. So with this in mind, I am going to talk to you. Hello, Felicia. Nice to see you. I'm so excited to tell you about my podcasting experiences. Awesome. It's a pleasure seeing you. So I'm going to talk about why is it important to create podcasts or content. Now, when I was in my first business, I had created a blog rather than doing podcasting um, because it wasn't really something popular at the time. But podcasting is really popular. A lot of people are going online to listen to podcasts. And so podcasting makes it possible for you to actually connect with your audience and for them to see you in person, to know who you are, but also to create value so that they can see you as an expert. Now, in the pro- you don't have to be an expert when you st- first started podcasting because really you're still learning your voice. You're still learning how to build your brand. And if you know your brand and your product, then what you're learning is how to podcast or that, that would be the same thing with blogging if that's another form. Now, some people like to do that. Now, like for, I'm hearing that, you know, TikTok is like the biggest fad. But it's, you know, for a certain uh, market group, right? Because I'm not really on TikTok, but my audience is on Facebook. And my audience go on YouTube. It is really to find information on how to do something. So with that in mind, I have decided to use YouTube for my podcasting. I also am on Google Play and I'm also on iTunes under Mommy Nair Digital Marketing. So you could always check that out as well. So just to tell you a little bit about why I feel creating a podcast was important for me and creating content as well. So in about a few years ago, about two years ago, I started writing my book. And I know a lot of people have written books and we have a lot of friends who write books and you always wonder, okay, how do they make the money, right? Because the money is not in selling the books. Most people who write books, they write books so that they can actually get people to know them more and then they may use that as a tool to start speaking. So that is a great way because the money will be in speaking, right? So as I was looking at marketing and my background is in sales and marketing, I've been in sales and marketing for luxury hotels, and I knew that I needed to start getting to know my audience, my target audience, and really building that relationship. So that's what led me to starting Mom Unaire Digital Marketing. I had no clue where I was going with it, but I spent those two years learning about online marketing and really how to use the online platform to build my business. And I know my target market very well because I've had my own cosmetic line in 2000. I've had a business plan, a marketing plan, as well as a financial plan. So I know my target market very well. So I knew where they were and I felt that I wanted to use Facebook and to use podcasting to meet my audience because I didn't have a lot of time. For me, podcasting is a great way of doing this because I'm an educator and my schedule is really packed. 
So in order to share my voice, my knowledge, and get people to see me, my real, who I am, I thought podcasting would be the great way. So I started podcasting. I did not care about how many people watch my videos, how many people listen to my podcast. The idea in the beginning was to start it because I was as nervous as hell. I will tell you the truth. So I know that through this experience, podcasting has helped me to find my voice and I'm looking at my um, computer so that I can tell, make sure I cover every point. It has also helped me to create value for my target market because I can actually learn more about their pain of what they want to resolve and help me to find solutions as well and to provide those solutions. Now, I have also feel that when you start podcasting, you don't want to start it like first day of the flash and then just podcast. You always have to plan. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. It also made it makes it a great way for people to see you as an influencer because they see you in different platforms. They're not only seeing you on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest, but they're also seeing you if you have a YouTube or if you have the podcast just to be audio only. You don't have to use YouTube for your podcasting. I happen to use YouTube. I use also iTunes and Google Play. But you can just use iTunes and Google Play and just have a voice podcast rather than a visual. Since I'm a visual learner and I'm an educator and I'm always online, I am using YouTube as well and not missing out on that. It also helps you to push your boundaries. We're always afraid of doing new things. I know with coming up live, I was a little bit nervous. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to come live. But for me, coming live, it just pushed me out of my boundary and helps me to be a better person as well as creating my brand. And what it helps you to do as well when you podcast, it helps you to connect with your audience, your ideal audience. Because Because once you know who your ideal audience are, it helps you to really make that connection. They know your story. Sometimes people don't buy from you. It's because they don't trust you. Well, first, because they don't know you That's and they don't trust you. And they also are afraid. They, they don't know if they can succeed at it, right? So to break those barriers, it's for me writing content as well as podcasting works well. So for me, when I write my content, I just write the bullets for my podcast podcast and then that's my way of my platform that I'm using. But again, if you're nervous about podcasting, you can always do it audio and speak to the person as if it's your friend because that's really what you're trying to do is to build that connection and podcasting helps me to do that. So I am going to go over some key things. One of the things you need to do is to know your target audience. For me, I know my target audience from the age group, to where they congregate, what social media platform they use. I know also like their favorite movies, the food that they eat. I, I break, I broke it down to like knit and gritty. So knowing your target market is very important. So because once you know your target market, you'll be able to know, okay, what is exactly their needs? Your target market are very similar to you. Who, because you you bought this product or you're coming up with this solution because you had a problem, right? And you remember how that problem made you feel. Remember what it is that you were looking for to get that solution. And then now remember what you felt once you had the solution and you want to share it with everyone, right? So your target market is also someone that you want to have to come to your living room. I wouldn't invite just anyone to come to my house. So your target market would be that type of person you know you can have a cup of coffee with, you can talk, you can actually really connect with this person. Like for me, it's moms, it's working women. I honestly, time is very limited and is very precious. I cannot waste my time with a certain group of women. It has to be women who are business-minded, career-minded, professional, who want the best for their family, who want the best for their lives, who are always open to develop. So for me, I love that idea of moms because women, we, when we're moms, we don't play. We get it done. We get everything done. We take care of our family. We run our business. We do what we have to do to take care of what needs to be taken care of. 
And then we also have this feeling that, you know, we don't want to fail. We want to do what is right for our family and our children. So knowing your target market is one of the best things to do before you start podcasting or creating any form of content. Knowing doing that market research is very important. That is something that's very key because once you know your target market in every area, whether it is podcasting, whether it is Facebook marketing, you know exactly how to speak to your target people in your target market. You know exactly how to relate with them and how to create a message that connects with them and that hits them at the core. But you can't do that if you're, you don't know your target market because then you'll be going everywhere. So that is one important key. Now, when I first created my podcast, I had taken a training by Ping Jong how to create a podcast. I did a 21 day challenge and I tell you, I had to do 21 recordings for my podcast, but it was the best thing I've done. And I'll tell you why, because one of the part of the training that I learned was that you need to create a spreadsheet. You create a spreadsheet with each day. So, so I went numbered my spreadsheet. One column was one through 21. Then I, with each title. So every time I created a podcast, I created, wrote the title. And then every time I created, I copied the take, took the link of the podcast and saved it onto the spreadsheet with the title, right in the title. So this way, once I was ready to publish, I had 21 podcasts ready to publish. And I will tell you, it was a mess. I, I think when you're podcasting, you have to think about, you start buying all these expensive equipments that everyone buys. So I started off using Zoom when I started podcasting. Then I moved on to using my phone. But I think when I started the 21 day challenge, I used this laptop and it was funny because people would, could only see my chest and they would not see my face. It took months for me to actually realize that, hey, you have to set the camera up. So what I've done, and then I bought that expensive mic thinking that it would be great. I had problems too with that. So I would absolutely recommend that when you're podcasting, keep it simple. Don't make it anything. If you have a phone, you have an Android, or you have an iPhone, it is great. Just set up your iPhone or your Android to podcast. One of the things that I have learned that I'm using that is really great is the ring light. You can buy the ring light online. I bought it on eBay for really cheap. So you can buy it online for very cheap and and actually, I think it was under $50 when I bought it. And it has worked for me very well in creating my video messages, my podcast, as well as doing this live. I'm using my phone with this live. So absolutely, you don't have to go out there and spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You know, I see people spending $500 to $1,000 and they're still struggling learning how to podcast. So Keep it nice and simple. Use your phone. Your phone has great camera. It's going to work very well. And if you want to get the ring lighting, that works well because I find that sometimes, you know, depending on the area where you're, you're in, sometimes the lighting is great. Sometimes it's not, it's not that good. So that is one thing that I would suggest. Another thing I want to talk about is in, when you create that list, make sure for your Google Doc, you can use a Google Doc or Google Ad and then put the link for each of the podcasts you create. Before you create a, your podcast and before you go out live with your podcast, what you want to do is when you for your videos, I have started out writing a long script. It's hard to keep up with a script because how do you look at the camera and look at the person in the camera if you're reading a script? So what I've learned is the secret is to create bullet points. If you have bullet points of what you want to say, you look at the bullet point and then you could head out and, and say what you have. Sometimes too, what you could do is put the things that you are talking about, the bullet points, put it on a wall and look at the wall and just start reading off of it. Because as you're reading off of it, it looks like it still looks like you're looking at the person in the camera. So camera presence was one of the challenges I've had. And it took about two, it was two weeks ago and it's been 
close to four months that I've been podcasting that I'm having much better become with presence. So the next thing I would talk about is when you're creating your videos, the importance of knowing your target market is to know what products, how is your product going to serve your target market, right? So what fears will the, your ideal audience, your ideal customers or clients have before purchasing your product? So if you know those fears right away, you want to debunk them. Now, there are two types of fears, the external fears and the internal fears, right? The internal fears is like, can I really do it? Do I, I don't really have the skills for it. So then you want to debunk that by saying, hey, we're providing you with a training, step-by-step -step training on how to do this. We are also providing you with a document that gives you examples of exactly step-by-step -step of what you want, what you need to do. So that helps debunk it. So creating content that debunks your ideal audience's internal fears, external fears, is what if I fail? What would people think about me, right? So then you want to talk about create messages that debunks that. Maybe your message is, hey, when I did start this business, you know, I was afraid of failing, right? Because if I fail, my my family would look at me and wonder what, why did I waste my money on this? And that would make me feel like a failure to my family. So think about those fears and just tell the story. Don't say the fear, just tell the story. Debunk these fears in your videos. It will make a huge difference in your podcast. That's why it's really important to know your ideal audience. And in all of your podcasts, create a call to action in your videos. It has to be simple and soft. In the beginning, when you first doing your podcast. If you like this video, click like, that's exactly, or press, you know, if you would like some information about this, here's the link. I'm going to give you the information, free report or free information. And that's it. Very simple and soft. You're not selling anything. You're providing information. This is not the area where you sell. So in the beginning, really what you're doing is making that connection. And then what you want to do is, as you're starting to see that you're doing better in your podcast, you're getting that after you have a good amount of podcasts, then you want to start telling them to join, right? Hey, if you really love this podcast, join us for our next week's session or next month's session. If it, if you, it's okay to start slow. Like for me, I started with podcasting once a week. Then at some point I started with twice a week because my assistant, she loved my motivational Mondays. So I did what motivational Mondays and then I did Thursday, but it was a lot and I couldn't handle it. And I thought, how am I going to provide value and provide a good message? So what I did was that I started really just podcasting and once a week, once a week, simple as that. So I have here, Felicia, create 21 topics when starting. That's correct. Absolutely. 21 topics. Because, But when you create the 21 topics, it's not you have 21 to topics. Create a sheet where you have a sheet for each topic, right? When you're writing a document. And then because I did pay for the training and that training really prepared me. And I would say record all 21 of your podcasts first before going publishing your podcast, because that's exactly what I did. I made all of my 21 podcasts first before publishing. And that was the best thing I've done because as now that I have those 21 podcasts and I'm starting to publish the first podcast, I can work on the 22nd, the 23rd and the 24th and still have enough content for each week. Or if your podcast every month, still having enough content for every month. I don't know about your schedule, but as a mom, I am absolutely busy. As an educator, I literally have no time for myself. And building my business is really important to me. So, and it's something that I love and it's fun and it keeps me alive. For me, I needed to be able to do this without getting burnt out because that's one of the things we always have to think about our business. Are we getting burnt out to the point where we lose our joy? We want to have our joy in the thing that we love. 
and that's our business because our business is our future. You know, when we work for a company, we obviously are doing our best for that company, but they pay us, you know, no matter what they pay us, they still don't pay us what we were worth, right? Your business is what you are putting that seed in the ground to grow so that you can build something greater and better for yourself and for your family in the future. So plan ahead. So this way, with the limited time we have, which is 24 hours a day, which is not enough for any of us, that you don't find yourself running to get things done. So absolutely. Now, these are the secrets that I have for podcasting. I will tell you my podcasting journey. I It's, it's been phenomenal. And for me, um, at one point of, you know, being an educator, having my business, and podcasting, I have an assistant and my assistant helps me with editing my podcast, making sure the audio is perfect. But if you're just, I'm beginning to realize, and this is from doing things off the cuff because I don't have the time and I do it. I find that the more natural that your message is, the more natural that your podcast is, the more people like it. And so what you will do in the beginning is Really think about the things that you want to communicate with your ideal audience. How are you going to help them to solve these problems that they have? And then really write these information and then in bullet point format and make them large fonts so you can see them as you're speaking. Because in the beginning, you're going to be very nervous, right? And really speak to your ideal audience. Speak to them about maybe the pain that you've had prior to trying your product and how you have that aha moment, right? And that suddenly now you found a solution. And maybe when you found the solution, you still had challenges, just, just like me with podcasting, right? I decided, okay, I have limited time. So instead of blogging, I really preferred podcasting because then I had to think, because with blogging, you have to now think about the website, the you know changing your website, the HTML form, did all these other things that comes with developing websites. And I was like, I don't have time for that. So podcasting was the right platform that worked well for me. And so when I thought about my audience and I'm telling you my story, in the beginning, I, I learned about podcasting. I took the training and I did it, but there were failures, lots of failures. For failure was first one for me was all the 21 videos, like about probably seven of them were great. 21 of them were pretty much, it was like my, my right here, this part of my chest speaking to my audience. Although the message was great, but they were speaking to my audience. So some of them I had to redo. Some of the mistakes I've done was that all these equipments I spent money on weren't even working very well for me. I, my phone was the best thing. Looking into the camera was something that took a while for me to learn finding my own voice and i just started i literally just started finding my own voice which is exciting so these are the strategies that i you know the strategies that i've mentioned to you are the strategies that i've used to create my podcast one thing i would say know your target audience very well know them well know what platform where they're hanging out maybe podcasting is not for you maybe it's blogging Maybe it is, but find a place to create content. Maybe it's writing content for someone else who have a website. All of these areas are ways things to do. Maybe it's TikTok because people are doing it. Some people are actually using Facebook story to provide information and bring attracting people to their business. Maybe it is um, Instagram. There are people that I know who are doing phenomenally well with Instagram. Find a platform that works well for you, that you can use for your voice and absolutely use it so that you can build your business because no one's going to know where you are, who you are and what you do unless you let them know. So it's one way of letting people know. And I find that social media helps us actually to really spread out our message much faster faster than going door to door. I've done door to door sales before, and I will tell you door to door sales, you're knocking into someone's door, they have to open their door to you, right? They have to let you in. And once they let you in, now you're able to 
really make that connection and get to know the person, guess what? Social media platform is exactly that, letting people in. In fact, one secret I want to tell you is that when I am welcoming people into my Facebook as my personal Facebook, I will send them a message via audio or sometimes send them a message via video. And it's great because you know what? They get to see me. Like, you know, many of us are not seeing each other. We're at home quarantining. So getting to see someone. So figure out what platform works well for you. But if you feel that podcast saying is the right platform, know your target audience, know their pain, know the message, the solution that you have for them, and really create the content before you start podcasting. Plan it ahead. Create your videos ahead. You don't need to buy any expensive equipment. All you need is your phone and a ring light. That's what I'm using is my phone, my ring light. My laptop just has my bullet points and I'm here talking to you. So thank you so much for listening to this. And I am so glad that I came live. So if you like for me to come live on Saturdays at one o'clock, I'll continue to do that. I am going to try the other times that my members have mentioned. I know Felicia has joined me and I'm so happy that you've joined me. So thank you so much. So let's spread the love. And if you know people that you think that this group would be valuable for, please recommend this group to some of your friends as well. Absolutely. And, you know, if you want to share this video as well, share it with your friends to let them know. Podcasting is really taking that step forward, doing it. You don't need to be perfect. We're always waiting to be perfect at something. Just be there. Just do it. And, you know, and then we'll learn along and develop and become the person that we need to be. So I thank you so much for joining me and have a wonderful weekend. Goodbye, ladies. If you would like to get more information on how to build your business using online strategies as well as social media, please go to our website, momunairedigitalmarketing.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe and make some comments of what you would like to hear in our next show. Thank you. Bye-bye.